Hello Math 200 students, welcome to section 4.3. 4.3 is more discrete probability distributions. In 4.2 we talked about the binomial distribution. In 4.3 we're going to talk about the geometric and the Poisson distributions. And they, uh, they're, you know, kind of relative, rel relatives to, rel related to the binomial distribution. I said, I'm going to say exactly what I said before about the differences here. We do the free throw analogy. The binomial distribution would be like the number of free throws that I make out of 10 shots. 10 attempts. How many did I make? Uh, let me say Poisson next because I think it's more similar to binomial than geometric is. Poisson would be kind of similar. The number of free throws that I would make, not out of 10 attempts, but in a certain amount of time. So let's say in 10 minutes. And then the geometric distribution is how many free throws does it take me until I make the very first one? So do I make it on the first attempt or do it, does it take me a million attempts to make the first one? All right. So moving on, let's look at the geometric in more detail. Many actions in life are repeated until a success occurs. For instance, you might have to send an email several times before it is successfully sent. A situation such as this can be represented by a geometric distribution. So sometimes you only are concerned about, well, does it ever happen at all? And how long does it take until it finally happens? So it's not about how many successes, it's just how long does it take until we finally have this quote-unquote success. Um, like how many dates do you have to go on until you find Mr. or Mrs. Wright? Uh, hopefully that's all you got to do is get that right that one time and that's it. Um, that's the way it should be anyway. Uh, so a, a geometric distribution is a discrete probability distribution of a random variable x that satisfies these conditions. Number one, a trial is repeated until a success occurs. Number two, the repeated trials are independent of each other. Number three, the probability of success P is the same for each trial. So it's sounding pretty similar in those ways to uh, binomial. The random variable X represents the number of trials in which the first success occurs. The probability that the first success will occur on trial number X is this formula. P times Q to the X minus one. And I can show you why that makes sense with this next example. All right, LeBron James. Basketball player LeBron James makes a free throw shot about 75% of the time. Find the probability that the first free throw shot he makes occurs on the third or fourth attempt. Okay, let's, let's talk about why that, how we can do that. So the third attempt, he's a 75% shooter. So P equals 0.75. To make the very first one on the, on the third attempt, it means he would have to miss the first one. So that's a 25% chance there. He'd have to miss the second one, so another 25% chance. And then make the third one, so that's a 75% chance there. So multiply those together, and that gives you the probability that X equals 3, meaning he makes it on the third one. What's the probability that he makes it on the fourth one? X equals 4. One, two, three, four. That means he misses the first one, misses the second one, misses the third one, and makes the fourth one. So that gives me that that uh, probability there. Now the probability that it's either three or four would be both of these added together. Let's call this A and this B and B. A and B added together. And why? So this makes sense of why the formula is P times Q uh, to the uh, to the X minus one. Because look at this, probably that it's three it is uh, 0 0.75 to the first and 0 0.25 to the second. So that's that fits this formula to a T. And it's always gonna fit that very well because you're gonna have whatever the, the X value is, that's when you have the first success. That means you're going to have one less than that for the number of failures. If you make it on the ninth attempt, that means you had eight failures before that, right? So that, that formula makes a good bit of sense. So let me show you how you can do that in your calculator. We can say point, uh, 0.75 times point 0.25 to the third 
plus same thing. I don't think I need those parentheses. 0 0.75 times 0 0.25 to the second. So this first part is the probably that he makes it on the fourth attempt. This second part is probably that he makes it on the third attempt. And I add those together to get, to get the probably that he makes it on either the third or the fourth attempt. So the probably that he makes his first shot on the third or fourth attempt is about 6%, 0 0.0585. Okay. Um, now let me show you how you can also do it an uh, easier way, kind of like I showed you before with the binomial PDF. Go to second distributions. And if you'll scroll down to the bottom or just scroll up from the bottom, notice I have geometric PDF and geometric CDF, just like I had binomial PDF and CDF. So I'm going to go geometric PDF. The P value is 0 0.75. So that's the probability of success. The X value is three. I'm going to paste that. Uh, and I'm going to add that with the exact same thing, except uh, I'm going to change the 3 to a 4. So change the 3 to a 4. And that gives me the exact same answer I got doing it the manual way. All right. Move to the next page. Even though theoretically a success may never occur, the geometric distribution is a discrete probability distribution because the values of X can be listed one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to kind of infinity. But notice as X becomes larger, P of X gets closer to zero. For example, what is the probability that it takes LeBron James a billion shots before he makes the first one? You can calculate that and it's going to be just unimaginably close to zero, right? So the more you get, uh, the, the closer the probably is going to get to zero. All right, the Poisson distribution. In a binomial experiment, you are interested in finding the probability of a specific number of successes in a given number of trials. Suppose instead that you want to know the probability that a specific number of occurrences takes place within a given unit of time, area, or volume. So this is kind of strange because you're counting a discrete number of occurrences, you know, one occurrence, two occurrences, all the way to whatever, a million and one occurrences. But So that's discrete, but it's over a, a continuous um, unit of time or area or volume, right? Time is continuous and area and volume are both continuous. So it's kind of strange that way. It kind of mixes the two concepts. For instance, to determine the probability that an employee will take 15 six day, sick days within a year, you can use a Poisson distribution. The Poisson distribution is a discrete probability distribution of a random variable X that satisfies these conditions. The experiment consists of counting the number of times X an event occurs in a given interval. The interval can be an interval of time, area, or volume. So area could be like, what's the probability that I have, um, you know, like 10 dents in my hardwood floor in this area of the room or something like that. Volume is kind of the sum. What's the probability that I have, uh, you know, four bad molecules in this volume of uh, pesticide or whatever? Um, the experiment consists of counting the number of times X events occurs in a given interval of time, area, or volume. The probability of an event occurring is the same for each interval. The number of occurrences is one in one interval is independent of the number of occurrences in the other intervals. The probability of exactly x occurrences in an interval is mu to the x. All right, mu is the average number of occurrences in a given unit of time, area, or volume. So, like, you'd have to be given that in the problem. So, if I want to say, what's the probability that I make uh, uh, 28, 28 shots in 10 minutes? Then you'd have to be given the fact that, you know, on average, I make about 20 shots in 10 minutes. All right, so mu in that case would be 20. And then x would be 28. In my, in my example I just gave you. E is that natural number that we studied back in college algebra, at the end of college algebra. It is the, the natural number, also known as Euler's number. It's 1 plus 1 over n raised to the nth power where n approaches infinity. And it is 
around about 2.72. And so it's e to the negative mu divided by x factorial. All right, so let me, get, let me do my example here. What's probably that I make 28 shots in 10 minutes, uh, given that my average is 20 shots in 10 minutes? So I would say 20 uh, to the uh, 28th, right, mu to the x times e. And your e button on your calculator is above the divide by symbol in blue. So I'm going to hit that e button right there, e to the negative mu, so e to the negative, here's my negative button, negative 20, okay, divided by x factorial, so divided by 28, then go to math, click over to probability, and the factorial option is option 4, so over 28 factorial, that's going to give me 0 0.018. So the probability that I make 28 shots, exactly 28 shots in 10 minutes is about 1.8%. Here's another way to do it. Again, an easier way. Second distributions. Go down to the bottom until you see Poisson PDF or Poisson CDF. So Poisson PDF. What's the probability that I make exactly 28 shots? Mu, as I've told you, is 20. The x value is 28, and it's going to calculate the whole thing for me. Look at that, same answer. That's, that's pretty great. All right, let's do this example from the book. The mean number of accidents per month at a certain intersection is 3. So there's your mu. The mean number of accidents per month at a certain intersection is 3. What is the probability that in a given month, 4 accidents will occur at this intersection? Okay, I could type it all in manually, or I could do the... Plus on PDF, uh, simpler way. Plus on PDF, mu is three accidents per month, and the x value I want to know is four in this particular month, and that will give me 0 .168, 0 0.168, so about 17% chance that that happens. Next page. Okay. Again, it's trying to teach me how to use a table to do it, uh, but I would not recommend using a table because our technology is so much better and more convenient. So let's do this example not using a table, but using a calculator. Population count so it shows that the average number of rabbits per acre living in a field is 3.6. Use a table to find the probability that exactly seven rabbits are found on any given acre of the field. All right. So 3.6 is mu, that's my average. Same distributions. Plus on PDF. Uh, 3.6 is mu. I want to find the probability that exactly six rabbits are on this. Then it's a six. No, it said seven. Probably that exactly seven rabbits. So my x value is seven. And I click paste. And it gives me the, that the probability for that is about 4.2%, 0 0.042. Okay. Here's a nice table summarizing the three most common discrete probability distributions that we've talked about. The binomial distribution is given here. Summary for that. The geometric distribution is here and a summary for that. And the Poisson distribution here and a summary for that. All right, that's the end of the chapter, but I do want to show you just, I want, let me go back to this example here just because I think that you're going to need what I'm about to show you in some of the homework problems. What if instead of saying, what's the probability that, that seven rabbits are, on, are found on any given acre of the field? What if it said, what's the probability that at least seven rabbits? Okay, let me... Let's do it right here. So mu equals 3.6. What's the probability that x is at least 7, meaning greater than or equal to 7? Okay. Well, what I would do is I would do 1 minus the probability that x is uh, less than 7. 
Because if I go do greater than seven, then I'm going to have to do probably that seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12 all the way for infinity. But I could just do one minus probably that X is less than seven because that's going to give me the same answer. So to what, how do I get this? This is the probability that X is equal to zero. Uh, plus the probability that X is equal to one plus the probability that X is equal to two all the way down to the probability that X is equal to six, right? Or all of that can boil down to simply doing the Poisson CDF, cumulative distribution function, instead of PDF. And I'm going to put in 3.6 for my average, and I'm going to put in 6. Because if I, whatever number I put in here, it's going to do the cumulative thing all the way to that number. So it's going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and add them all together for me if I just do that calculation. So I'm going to do 1 minus Poisson CDF for 3.6 and 6. All right, so I am going to uh, do that in my calculator. I'm going to say 1 minus the second distributions. I go to Poisson CDF. Now I'm doing 3.6 for the mean. My x value is going to be uh, it's going to be 6. And this is going to give me the probability that it's 7 or more. Because I'm doing 1 minus the cumulative distribution function all the way to 6. So this is going to give me 7 or more. And the probability that I get at anything more than 7, anything from 7 on up. I should have said anything more than 6. So anything from 7 on up, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to infinity. The probability that I get anything like that is going to be about 7%. 0.073. So you can use the PDF anytime you're talking about just one value. You can use the CDF when you're talking about a, a bigger range of values. And that goes for the binomial or the geometric or the Poisson. And so that does it for section uh, 4.3. Good luck on 4.3 assignment. Um, we've now finished chapter four. That means we are ready to have a second test, which will cover chapter three and chapter four. So, uh, uh, hope you're ready for that. Good luck. Uh, you can use your practice test uh, for test two to prepare yourself for that and be ready for our second test.